Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about C++ generics using templates. Specifically, we're going to continue on from our previous lesson on class templates, so go ahead and check that one out in the playlist if you haven't already. Otherwise, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about static member variables and templated classes and how to make those templated themselves. So with that said, let's go ahead and do a quick review and then talk about static in the context of a class in C++. So just a little bit of a review here. We created this container class here. Now this is a template class, meaning that we can change the type of information that's stored in it. And we have one parameter here for T, which you can see is the data here, which we are allocating and then freeing in the constructor. And we can even have non-object types like size here, which is just some integer here for the amount of memory that we're allocated. Now each different instantiation of our container here instantiates a new template class. Even if we have a version that has a five or a seven, these are totally different uh, template classes for the compiler. So of course we talked about how that can create lots of uh, different versions of our templates. And this is essentially how standard array works when you have this sort of uh, int size parameter as part of it. Okay, so with that said, let's just go ahead and make sure that compiles, it runs, doesn't really do anything at this point, but we're gonna wanna get some information out of it shortly. So I've included the IO stream uh, here so we can print some information. Now, what if we go ahead and add a static member variable here? Now, I'm just going to go ahead and make it public so that we can print it out. Of course, you'd want to consider if you make this private or whatever you want to do with it. So I'm going to use the type here, static T, and let's just go ahead and give this some name here like M underscore variable. Okay. So initially, if I just compile this program, and try to run it, uh, nothing is going to happen here. Um, again, no, no problems. We're not really using this static variable, but it exists somewhere. In fact, let's try to figure out where it exists in our code here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, uh, and let me just uh, close this down here and copy and paste our code here. And I think for folks who are following along in the series, you know where this is going. This is going to go into CPP Insights and tell us just a little bit about what our code is actually generating here. So let's actually run this and see if we can find any insights into M variable here. Okay, so here's our uh, class template here. Here is our instantiation here with our container. And look at this, we have a static int M variable. Now recall we have an instantiation of a int version here. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. Here we have our second instantiation here. That's coming from line 23 and also a static int here. Okay, so that makes sense. And then we have our final container class here, which has a double. So as expected, we have a double version of our static variable. So that's the first thing to keep in mind that each instantiated class here that's been generated, because again, that's the point of using templates to get the compiler to sort of write code for us for the different versions that we need, is going to have its own copy of a static variable. Now, if you need a refresher on what static does exactly, I have a lesson on that. But the short answer is no matter how many instances of a class I create that contains integers and five for the template parameters, they're all going to share that one static variable. Okay, that's the basic idea of static in a class. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we could do something like maybe print out a variable um, between two classes here. So I'm going to go ahead back in our code and let's go ahead and uh, modify things here just a little bit and kind of play around here. Okay, so what I want to do here is let's go ahead and just simplify things for now and just create uh, one type here. Because first and foremost, I want to figure out how can I just use this sort of template. And you can imagine that we have something like container colon colon m underscore variable. And then we need to assign it some value here, you know, seven. In this case, maybe I know it's an integer here. Let's just go ahead and try to run this. It's not going to compile, but let's just go ahead and see what kind of errors we get to inform us of what's going on here. Okay, so it's going to tell us error qualified ID because it doesn't know exactly what this thing is to the left of the equal sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to just mimic what we have here. Because we know that for our templates, 
each one that's instantiated, so here's an example of one that's instantiated, we're going to have a specific copy of that static member variable. Okay, so this sort of logically makes sense here. Let's go ahead and try to build this. And now we're getting something really weird here. And if you don't know, this looks like a linker error. This isn't a compiler issue. Our code is, um, as far as the syntax goes, correct. This is how we would use a static variable. But it is telling us that we have an undefined reference to this particular symbol here. So I'll highlight it on this line here in our error message. So just like with static variables with a regular class, we do have to define them somewhere. Okay, so how could we do this? Well, we're going to, in a way, mimic what we uh, do for setting up our class here and then create the actual variable here. So I'm going to do template type name t, again, just following along with what's on the top of the screen here, int size, and then, well, what is the actual variable uh, type here? And this is important. What's the thing that I'm uh, actually creating? Well, it's going to be of t here. Right? We want this to be some integer. Okay, just to show you um, again in our uh, code from CPP Insights, let's go ahead to one of these instances. This is an actual integer uh, in our class here. So we want that to be the same type here. And then we would go ahead and now follow along and say container t. And I'm just going to put this on one line, then I'll separate it out uh, just so you can see here. Um, or sorry, uh, t whatever the size happens to be, and then m uh, variable. And that would be enough to declare uh, or basically tell the linker, hey, this exists, and make sure you generate one of these variables uh, for each instantiation of my class here. Okay, and I have one here. So let's go ahead and see if this compiles here. So it compiles and it runs. Okay, so that's perfect. Now, typically for this uh, static member variable here, I would separate it out onto a line here, um, and that would be um, okay for us. Okay, you can leave it on one line if you like. Uh, I typically do this on two lines here. So static member variable telling the compiler, hey, we exist. Okay, just so that's on one line. Now, again, just to show you that this is working, let's go ahead and create another instance of some class here, C2, and uh, it would be, you know, sharing this same instance here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and print this out. Again, it's a little bit of a uh, mouthful here. Container, the version with the int 5 here, m variable, and do the standard out here. Okay, so we should expect a 7, assuming I didn't make any syntax errors, which Likely I didn't, and I run it, and we get a 7 here, okay? Now let's go ahead and just change this here to uh, 7 here, for instance, okay? So this version, again, is a separate instantiation. It still looks similar in that it has the same type here, but this is, again, a separate class here, okay? So now let's try to actually run this here. Well, it does compile, and now when I run it, uh, oh, it still gets seven here. Actually, let's let's change it to this version here, where I put in a seven, and let's see what happens here. So it compiles just fine, and when I run it, I just get zero, right? Because I haven't assigned this specific version to any value. Okay, so let's go ahead and just change it so that I actually initialize this to some value. And again, I like to pick weird numbers. Uh, not zero, not one, not negative one when testing these things um, to ensure that we uh, get the actual value we want. And now we, in fact, are getting value 157 here. Okay, so just like with static member variables in classes, we can do the same things with our templated classes. Let me go ahead and just leave this on the screen one more time so you can actually see us generating the templated version that's saying, hey, this exists to the uh, actual compiler, and then we'll actually generate some code for it. Now, just as one more exercise here, let me go ahead and uh, shut this down and um, show you uh, when we put this into CPP Insights um, that that code is actually generated here. So let's go ahead and just uh, paste this in one more time. Um, and what I'm looking for is, again, just to show you the uh, different instantiations of those static member variables here. 
Okay. Uh, oops, compilation failed. That's because we need our uh, IO stream library. Just didn't get everything compiled in there. What a great tool. It actually tells us <laughs> when things break. Um, okay, so if I scroll down here, scroll down here, now we can actually see here the static, uh, you know, during my comment here, the different instantiations that are uh, actually being used. So you can see that the compiler generated uh, these two for us because, well, we have two versions here and we're actually using two here from our template here. All right, folks, so I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope it gives you an insight that you can use static, you know, everything that is available to you um, in your other classes in general is available to you in templates. So you should take advantage of those uh, things if you're using them um, as needed. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it was helpful. Go ahead and leave a comment below if you have any questions, a like if it was helpful. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future lessons on generics or other C++ topics in this series or other series on this channel. And I'll look forward to seeing you folks soon. Thanks for your time.